Welcome to the Kindness Cast from Neighborhood Bridges. I'm Ron Smith. The purpose of the Kindness Cast is to showcase the people that are making a difference in our communities to bring kindness to those in need. Since our founding in 2017, Neighborhood Bridges has grown to serve over 49 communities across four states. On today's episode, we're joined by Rick Bannister, Chief Believer and Founder of Neighborhood Bridges. Welcome, Rick, and thank you for joining us. It's been another amazing year of impact for Neighborhood Bridges. Can you share with us how this year has been just another year of tremendous growth for the organization in so many different ways? Yeah, thanks for having me today, Ron. I really appreciate your taking the time uh, to spend a few minutes with me. So uh, we're in our seventh year for Neighborhood Bridges this year in 2023, and uh, we are here at the week of Thanksgiving. I'm happy to report that our communities have driven impact to over 89,000 students and families just this year. That's so far this, this year. And so that's about 1,935 kids, students that we've impacted every week in 2023. And um, just last month alone, um, in the month of October, we saw collectively across neighborhood bridges a quarter of a million dollars in giving um, from residents in our communities. And that that's a that's a big number. Uh, we've been very, very busy. Um, all, all told, this takes us now, again, we will celebrate our seventh anniversary on Martin Luther King Day in January. Um, but all told, we've driven impact together to more than 408,000 students across our 49 neighborhood bridges communities. And so um, that's a big number. And what we're seeing now is that we're doubling our impact numbers every year. And so we're terribly grateful for that. You know, um, we've gotten to the point, Ron, where we now have engaged over 200,000 donors, subscribers, social media followers, volunteers, and advocates. So it's the place we want to be. It's it's how we want to live. And uh, people are doing amazing things. Neighborhood Bridges continues to make a difference in communities now across four states. Can you share with us where Neighborhood Bridges is now making an impact with new communities here in 2023? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we don't market Neighborhood Bridges. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me about that. We just serve. You know, we've just put our head down and we've been serving. But We've grown uh, by more than 20% this year in adding new communities. Uh, we now serve 49 communities. So uh, in Ohio, in Tennessee, in Alabama, and in Mississippi. And so our new communities this year in Ohio, I'll just list them for you. Um, in the Toledo area, we've added Perrysburg and Anthony Wayne. Um, in the Dayton area, greater Dayton area, we added Miamisburg. Uh, in Butler County, we added Fairfield schools. And then up in Portage County, there's something in the water. We we are growing very quickly there. Uh, it's word of mouth, and we are grateful for that. But we've added Crestwood and Waterloo uh, school districts there in Ohio. And then in Alabama, we're about to add Bibb County, uh, Alabama, which is fun because that's along the corridor between uh, Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. So I would call that a kindness corridor there, and we're excited about that. Also, Ron, we've seen a tremendous expansion on the southern coast of Neighborhood Bridges um, down along uh, Mobile Bay, where our volunteers there uh, expanded from Fairhope to now the entire Baldwin County area. And um, Ron, they have filled 300 needs in Neighborhood Bridges, Baldwin County alone this year. And just an interesting fact uh, I've learned, Baldwin County, Alabama is the second largest county east of the Mississippi geographically. So it's been very, very exciting. We've also added Moss Point, Mississippi. And um, I think a lot of this growth has been, it's all been word of mouth, but I particularly want to thank the Ohio School Counselors Association for featuring us in a statewide presentation. That's why we've seen so many Ohio communities added, and we hope to make that same presentation to the Alabama school counselors in 2024. Thanks, Rick. Coming up. We're going to spend more time, starting now, 
talking about what it, what does it mean to drive impact through neighborhood bridges. When your kindness cast continues, we'll be right back. At Neighborhood Bridges, kindness is cool. How can I provide kindness? Visit neighborhoodbridges.org. Select any community you wish to support. Enter my email, quick and easy. Anonymous student and family needs and delivery instructions come to my email. I select a need, such as a size eight winter coat with a hood. I donate the coat. I drop it off at a specific fire station or donation center as instructed. Volunteers deliver my contribution to the advocate. Kindness provided. Join our Gateway for Kindness and sign up today. Welcome back to the Kindness Cast. I'm Ron Smith. With us today is Rick Bannister, Chief Believer of Neighborhood Bridges. One of the greatest ways that Neighborhood Bridges makes a difference is when we're able to meet the specific needs of a student. Can you describe for us what that impact looks like and how it all comes together? Yeah, Ron, I really appreciate that question because uh, th this is a mistake that I make because I tend to be a numbers guy. Um, I've run you know, nonprofit organizations all my life, but behind those numbers are beating hearts. And so we're going to spend more time starting now talking about what it, what does it mean to drive impact through neighborhood bridges. So Ron, for, for, for you today and for our um, valued subscribers, um, I've, I've put together a summary. So uh, we talked about those big numbers in 2023, and this is how it breaks down. Uh, so far this year, 22,000 students are receiving clothing assistance through Neighborhood Bridges. That's shoes, coats, pants, shirts, socks, undergarments, leggings, things like that. 22,000 students. Our donors have helped us serve 3,500 students and families uh, who have received furniture donations from Neighborhood Bridges. 3,500 students and families. Those are beds and sofas and kitchen tables and washers and dryers and furniture and put bikes in there because I didn't know where to put bikes and basic household items. Um, you know, and I, my message to the community is whether you're in Sylvania, Ohio, our northernmost neighborhood bridges community or down along Baldwin County, Alabama, or anywhere in between that 1200 miles mm -hmm. of kindness that we serve, the most common things we see uh, in this category are beds and washers and dryers, beds and washers and dryers. And so, um, we're happy and grateful that we've been able to serve so many in that area. 42,000 students, Ron, are receiving personal care items this year through Neighborhood Bridges. These are the things we've learned that our students are asking for the most. Um, the basic things in life, they're asking for soap and shampoo and deodorant and feminine hygiene products, undergarments, toothpaste, toothbrushes, things like that. And I want to just put a footnote though there. We love our student success centers. That's what we call them now, uh, where students can come in and get what they need because that gives our trained and licensed school staff an opportunity to spend a quiet moment with that student. And likely, it's likely if they need these personal care items that they have additional needs. And it, there, there's a point of um, reflection right there. And, and uh, the school counselor or the social worker can then post additional needs on behalf of that student. And so we can really dive deeper and serve that student in a more holistic manner. 9,000 students this year, Ron, are receiving backpacks or school supplies. 6,000 students or family members are receiving food assistance or snacks during their school day. 7,200 students and family members are receiving financial assistance. This would come in the um, in the way of rent or utilities or school fees or extracurricular fees, things like that. 8,600 students are receiving gifts. Um, we're approaching the holiday season, gift cards or gas cards. And many of these uh, are directed towards the kids with the biggest needs to help them provide for basic necessities while school is out and they can't access food or services during holiday time or spring break time or summer break time. Ron, nearly 100 students this year are receiving eye exam and eyeglasses. And 
we have directly donated eight vehicles this year through neighborhood bridges to families or to single moms. And so we think this is what love looks like at neighborhood bridges. And we're terribly grateful, grateful um, to all of our supporters for making that happen. The impact of neighborhood bridges is amazing and also very inspiring. What do you feel attributes to this success in serving so many students? I think it's our mission, Ron. You know, I think that we're uber focused on, um, you know, removing this, what a superintendent would call a non-cognitive barrier. And I think when it comes to children, we're all in, right? We're seeing it. Um, community members continue to come forward. Um, and so I want to share a little data with you. Um, this is hard because this is the week of the Ohio State-Michigan game, and I happen to be a Buckeye. But the University of Michigan did a study a few years ago, their Division of Poverty Solutions. And what they found is what we would find in any community across America. Students graduate at a rate of 92% if they don't uh, face economic disadvantage, 92%, it's where it should be. But we lose 20% of those kids to graduation. It drops to 72% if a child faces poverty or economic disadvantage. And then we, we drop all the way to 53% graduation rate if kids um, experience economic disadvantage and also homelessness during their life. Can you imagine? Yes, you can, because I know you serve. Um, but I think that our focus and our mission um, and, and being so um, dedicated to serving that segment of our population is resonating with people everywhere. Um, I also want to remind everybody that our logo is on, in all lowercase, and that's intentional. We created the Neighborhood Bridges logo, logo in lowercase because... We do not want to replicate services. We do not want to be redundant. We want the opposite. We want to band together. We want to bridge resources all towards our mission, by the way, and serving children. And I think that, I think all of that, Ron, people understand and it resonates with them. Um, listen, Neighborhood Bridges is a bet on humanity and we've gotten this right. Uh, at this week of Thanksgiving, it's it's nice to celebrate and be thankful for how much people care for one another. Um, it's it's a great world to live in. It's neighborhood bridges is a clarion call. It's a clarion call to put children first, and um, we are very grateful that we're able to do that. Thanks, Rick. Up next, we just serve. We just love and serve through Neighborhood Bridges. And that's, I think, the greatest gift you could possibly have this week of Thanksgiving. A special holiday message when your kindness cast continues. We'll be right back. Groceries, coats for kids, help with school fees. There is momentum to kindness. Once in motion, it passes from person to person, community to community. Neighborhood Bridges creates a gateway for kindness. We bridge the gap between those in need and those who can help. Kindness and impact can begin in five easy steps. Form a steering committee of community leaders to help promote your efforts. Include the city, chamber, and others. Select volunteers to be area directors. This is a part-time role. We provide a toolkit. Determine donation drop-off locations. Select advocates to post needs. Teachers, counselors, social workers, clergy, therapists. Start posting needs. Advocates log in, post needs. The community responds. Needs are met year round. Monetary gifts are accepted online. Monthly giving is an option. To an account set up by Neighborhood Bridges. Kindness provided. Welcome back to the Kindness Cast. I'm Ron Smith. With us today is Rick Bannister, Chief Believer of Neighborhood Bridges. With the holidays here, what would you like to share with the supporters of Neighborhood Bridges? Yeah, we're grateful. Um, thank you for meeting the moment. You know, um, I, had a, I had a great question posed to me, Ron, uh, on a recent visit to Alabama. And I was sitting in a room 
with community leaders in Tuscaloosa and the president of the Chamber of Commerce of West, the, the, cha the West Alabama Chamber of Commerce was sitting there and they were just reflecting on everything. And he said to me, is there a way to kind of serve up the needs and prioritize them based upon which are, you know, the greatest emergencies? And I, I thought that was really a thoughtful question. And I thought about it there in a room full of people. And my answer to him is, this is all an emergency. Anything that comes to neighborhood bridges is keeping a child out of the classroom. And so it takes everyone um, to make this happen. And so I want to say thank you to our 49 school district leaders, our superintendents and school boards for giving this the importance that it deserves uh, in our work together with them. I want to thank our volunteer area directors who are spending their lives volunteering their time, bridging impact in our communities. I want to thank our donors for watching their emails and following us on social media and meeting the moment. And I also want to thank those who have moved to recurring donations. We really appreciate those monthly or quarterly or semi-annual donations that help us meet those emergencies, which they all are in a timely way. I want to thank our kindness council members who have come forward to support their local communities and our sponsors. And most of all, Ron, I, I just, you know, I want to be transparent and grateful and, and mention what's, I think, also part of the special sauce here. And I want to be transparent with everyone about this, but, you know, Neighborhood Bridges is designed in partnership with licensed and trained individuals in our school district communities, like counselors, like social workers, like mental health professionals. They have been serving these children for generations. And so we operate hand in hand with these folks who are trained to make those assessments on what is keeping a child out of the classroom. And so therefore, we operate on love and trust. And that allows us, there, there's no red tape with neighborhood bridges. There are no delays. There are no politics. There are no forms. There are no obstacles. There are no language barriers. We just serve. We just love and serve through neighborhood bridges. And that's, I think, the greatest gift you could possibly have this week of Thanksgiving. Thanks, Rick. That definitely describes how just a few people united in a purpose have joined together with the power of Neighborhood Bridges and the impact it can have on a community. That brings us to a close for this Kindness Cast. The mission behind Neighborhood Bridges is to bridge communities with schools in providing basic needs and removing barriers for students so they can engage and succeed in school and life. For additional information about Neighborhood Bridges, visit our website at neighborhoodbridges.org. We look forward to serving you on our next Kindness Cast and bring you the people and stories of how Neighborhood Bridges is making a difference and impact. I'm Ron Smith. On behalf of all of us at Neighborhood Bridges, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching. And remember, kindness changes everything. And kindness is cool. Have a great day. <laughs>